Hello everyone, welcome to Royal Palace Online Crash Course. In this video, I am going to discuss about uh, rotational motion. Rotational motion and uh, in my video of uh, Newton's laws of motion, one of the student asked, sir please explain the concept of inertia. That uh, concept of inertia also we can explain here in this rotational motion. So, what is rotation motion means uh, in linear motion body will cover the distance, but in rotational motion body will cover the angles. We will have here angular displacement, angular velocity and uh, angular acceleration. So, the kinematic equation can be converted into rotational motion, kinematic equation can be converted into rotational motion that is V is equal to u plus a t, I can write this as omega 2 is equal to omega 1 plus alpha t. Similarly, s is equal to u t plus half a t square, this you can write theta is equal to omega 1 t plus half alpha t square. Similarly, v square minus u square is equal to 2 a s, this can be written as omega 2 square minus omega 1 square is equal to 2 alpha theta. All formulas what you studied in linear motion can be converted into rotational motion. Here omega is angular velocity, where omega 1 is initial angular velocity, omega 2 is final angular velocity, theta is angular displacement, omega 1 is initial angular velocity, alpha is angular acceleration and uh, omega 2 square minus omega 1 square is equal to 2 alpha theta, where theta is the angular displacement. Okay? Now, the formulas what you studied, all formulas can be converted. You know that uh, force is equal to m a, force is equal to m a, here m is the mass of, uh, m is mass which is nothing but measure of inertia which is nothing but measure of inertia. Measure of inertia means what is inertia? It is the inherent property of a body by virtue of which it opposes the change in its motion, change in its state of rest or change in its direction. In order to overcome inertia, you have to apply force. So, why force is required? Force is required to make a body to move or to change its state of rest or change its uniform motion or change its direction. To all these things we want, we want force. Similarly, the analog of force in rotatory motion is torque. Torque tau is equal to I alpha, where I is called moment of inertia, the inherent property of a body by virtue of which it opposes the rotation. See, if you want to rotate this body, it has some opposition, for that you have to apply torque, then only the body will rotate. So, if you take a rod, let us assume this chalk piece as rod to rotate it from end or you take this pen, rotate this uh, pen from end, it will take more, more torque. If you rotating this pen at the center, it will take less torque. That means, moment of inertia, here it is more, when compared with moment of inertia at its center. Rod, rod formula also, if you take moment of inertia at uh, end, you will get more when compared with center. That means, in order to make a body to rotate, in order to make a body to rotate, you are applying some force that we call it as torque, which force will apply for setting into linear motion, torque will apply for setting into angular motion. So, now moment of inertia is very important topic in competitive exams. Many times they are asking questions on moment of inertia. Moment of inertia I is equal to m k square where m is total mass and k is radius of gyration. If there are some particles in a coordinate axis like m 1, m 2 and m 3, like m 3, if the distance of their axis r 1, r 2 and r 3, this is r 3, this is r 2. Suppose you are rotating this all the three particles like this, you are rotating like this, they are present on the board, you are rotating like this, when you are rotating the moment of inertia for a system of particles, if there are only particles, 
So moment of inertia is m1 r1 square plus m2 r2 square plus m3 r3 square. This is moment of inertia. Okay. Similarly, if there is a regular body like rod, regular body like rod. If you want to rotate this rod from end, so there is a continuous distribution of mass m, there is a rod of mass m, you have to rotate this from end like this, so this is axis of rotation. This is the rod I am rotating like this, when you are rotating the rod like this, this is axis of rotation. Let us consider a small mass dm at a distance x from the axis of rotation, then small moment of inertia due to that small mass is dm x square. Now integrate this, the mass of total rod for a total length L is capital M, for a small length dx, for a small length dx, it is mass you calculate. That mass I will take it as dm, dm is equal to I will get dm is equal to dm is equal to m by L dx, this is the mass of the small part. Now integrate this from upper limit is L, lower limit is 0. Now integrate moment of inertia integral of di is equal to m by L dx x square integral. m by L is constant, then integration of dx x square will be x square by 3, then moment of inertia i is equal to you will get ml square by 3, ml square by 3 this is moment of inertia. This you will get x square by 3, upper limit substitute to L, lower limit substitute 0 because dm varies from 0 to L, this is axis of rotation, this is moment of inertia. Moment of inertia depends upon axis of rotation and distance of the particles from the center. So for rod when you are rotating from end, just now I have shown with my pen, when I am rotating it from end, I want more torque, when I am rotating it from center, I want less torque, let us, we can prove here because um, it depends upon torque depends upon moment of inertia, force depends upon mass, how much mass is there that much force you have to apply. To move a heavy object we require more force, similarly if moment of inertia is more we require more torque, so ml square by 3. Now let us calculate from center, what is moment of inertia from center of the rod, when you are rotating the rod from its center, this is the center, <coughs> this is the axis. Now you are rotating the rod like this, suppose this is the rod, you are rotating the rod like this, this is the rotation, previous case you are rotated like this, in this case this is rod you are rotating like this, here this is the rod you are rotating from center like this. Now let us see what is the moment of inertia in this case, follow the same principle, take a small mass dm of length dx then integrate it, same thing you will get, that is integral of m by L dx x square, x square dx, that is, but here limits will change, minus L by 2 to plus L by 2, minus L by 2 to plus L by 2, because this dm will vary from here to L by 2, from here to L by 2, minus L by 2 to plus L by 2, then if you solve this, you will get ml square by 12, ml square by 12, this is the moment of inertia while passing through the center, ml square by 12. Now you can observe ml square by 3 is greater than ml square by 12, so it is easy to rotate the rod from center when compared with end, so moment of inertia depends upon axis of rotation, so like this for regular bodies. They have given some formulas by using integration technique. For a rod from center it is ml square by 12, for a ring it is mr square from center, for a disc from center it is mr square by 2. Similarly, for a sphere passing through the center 2 by 5 mr square, 
Similarly, for allosphere 2 by 3 mR square, they have given some list you can see in your textbook and you can see the formulas. But uh, here person student has to remem <coughs> remember only passing through center of mass. If you remember the moment of inertia passing through center of mass, remaining formulas we can derive by using parallel axis theorem and perpendicular axis theorem. By using parallel axis and perpendicular axis we can derive. What is this parallel axis and perpendicular axis? Based on this parallel axis and perpendicular axis, you are getting questions in competitive exams in many times. Most of the examiners are concentrating on parallel axis and perpendicular axis. So, what is parallel axis? How to apply? Here, just I will show what is parallel axis and how we have to apply parallel axis and perpendicular axis theory well, when you are calculating moment of inertia. Let us take this rod as example. Moment of inertia of the rod passing through the center perpendicular to its plane. Here you should be very clear with the axis of rotation, you should be very careful while taking the axis of rotation. Here you have to see the wording what is telling. Moment of inertia of rod passing through center perpendicular to its plane. That means this is the axis of rotation. Suppose if there is a suppose there is this duster I want to rotate many ways are there I can rotate it from end I can rotate it from center I can make one hole at the center and I can rotate like this the moment of inertia of rod passing through its center perpendicular to its plane you have to take it as I naught whenever it is passing through center of mass you have to take it as I naught and if you want moment of inertia across a parallel axis across a parallel axis that means this is in z plane this is also should be in z plane this if you take it as i moment of inertia i is equal to i naught plus m r square this is called parallel axis theorem then how to apply for this rod you just apply this so while applying this parallel axis theorem student should be very careful that you have to take the reference point as the moment of inertia passing through center. Some students what they will take? They will take this end as I naught and they will calculate I as which is passing through center of mass you will get wrong answer. That's the definition is if the moment of inertia of a regular body passing through its center of mass is known, then we can find the moment of inertia at a parallel axis by using parallel axis theorem. Let us take this rod as example. In this two formulas ML square by 3 and ML square by 12, ML square by 12 is passing through center of mass. So, therefore, I naught I can take ML square by 12 plus mass of the rod is M and I want at end what is the distance between these two? It is if total length is L, L is the length of the rod, what is the distance between these two? L by 2. So, I can take L by 2 whole square. Now, add how much you will get? ML square by ML square by 3. This is I. This is how you have to apply parallel axis theorem. So, if you remember only the moment of inertia passing through its center, then you can get the remaining values. Suppose, similarly, if you take for a ring, if you take for a ring, moment of inertia of ring passing through its center perpendicular to its plane. That means, if this is ring you are rotating like this passing through its center perpendicular to its plane. So, moment of inertia of the ring passing through its center. So, this is ring moment of inertia of the ring passing through its center like this. So, ring is present like this I am rotating like this passing through its center perpendicular to its plane. This is this student has to remember this as m r square. Then how you will get this formula? By using integration technique we will get just like I shown for rod similarly for a different objects also we will get m r square. Now, you, <coughs> if I want moment of inertia passing through tangent, passing through tangent perpendicular to its plane, not like this, it should be parallel to this. So, I am rotating this in z plane this also should be in z plane only this is z axis this also z axis what is moment of inertia of the ring passing through the tangent perpendicular to its plane it is calculated by using parallel axis theorem i is equal to i naught 
plus m r square sorry i is equal to i naught plus m d square or m small r square you can take here what is the distance between these two r so i naught is m r square i naught is m r square plus m r square so you will get total it has 2 m r square so moment of inertia of the ring passing through its end is 2 m r square this is how you have to apply parallax theorem next is perpendicular axis theorem next perpendicular axis perpendicular axis perpendicular axis in perpendicular axis theorem it is very simple ij is equal to moment of inertia along z plane is equal to moment of inertia along x plane along x plus moment of inertia along y this is so same thing we can apply for this ring only i will take this ring only and i will show how to apply this perpendicular axis theorem so according to this axis theorem this mr square is ij because it is in z plane i am rotating this ring so ring is present like this i am rotating like this ring is in z plane z plane i am rotating so similarly <coughs> similarly if i want to rotate this ring along x axis like this this is x axis and along y axis along y axis also i want to rotate along y axis also i want to rotate so when i want to rotate this ring along x axis as well as y axis then i can apply per perpendicular axis theorem how to apply this uh, perpendicular <coughs> axis theorem is suppose if you take suppose if you take this as ring this ring i can rotate by keeping one hole at the center and rotate like this this is ij or i can rotate like this along one length i can rotate along the diagonal also so this is x and y this is z so similarly here ij is uh, ij is already known mr square ix is along the diameter that means along the diameter you are rotating ij is perpendicular to the diameter perpendicular to the diameter now what you, <coughs> what you will get is ix plus iy both ix and iy are the diameters of the ring so therefore what you will get this as 2x 2ix then ix is equal to mr square by 2 when a ring is rotated along its center perpendicular to its plane moment of inertia is mr square when it is rotated along the diameter in its plane along the diameter in its plane means if the ring is present in xy plane in that plane only we are rotating if you are rotating the ring perpendicular to its plane it is mr square now it is mr square by 2 now if you take a tangent in its plane when you are taking tangent in its plane you have to take this mr square as i not similarly you can get <coughs> tangent in its plane means mr square by 2 plus mr square that is 3 mr square by 2 so moment of inertia of ring passing through the tangent perpendicular to its plane is 2 mr square moment of inertia of the ring passing through any diameter is mr square by 2 similarly moment of inertia of the ring passing through the tangent in its plane it is mr square by 2 plus mr square that is 3 mr square by 2 this is how you have to apply parallax axis and perpendicular axis theorem and how to find moment of inertia of regular bodies for sphere it is 2 by 5 mr square and tangent also we can calculate let's see some of the examples in moment of inertia Okay, let us take an example where two identical rods of same mass, two identical rods of same mass, are arranged in the form of a cross or plus, like this. One is placed above the other, or like this. Arranged in the form of a cross, like this. Okay, so see here. The thing is. two rods are there one is arranged above like this one rod is arranged on another rod like this then uh, find 
the moment of inertia across the angular bisector of this combination any angular bisector let us take this angular bisector as b1 let us take this angular bisector as b2 b2 like this so you have to find moment of along the angular bisector in the plane of the rods like this the rotating like this okay for this uh, first i can find this iz moment of inertia in this plane i can find these two rods are present on the board moment of inertia along this line i can find because two rods are there moment of inertia of this rod perpendicular to its plane is mr ml square by 12 this rod also perpendicular to its plane is ml square by 12 so total moment of inertia i is equal to ml square by 12 plus ml square by 12 you will get ml square by 6 ml square by 6 that is iz because it is in z plane but now i want in a x and y plane this i can take it as x this i can take it as y because all are perpendicular so this is iz this i can take x this i can take y these two are perpendicular these two are perpendicular so i can apply perpendicular axis theorem to apply perpendicular axis theorem three perpendicular axis are required iz ix and iy so iz is equal to iz is equal to ix plus iy ix plus iy now this is both are equal ix is equal to iy because both are angular bisectors only both are angular bisectors only so that's why i can write this as 2ix 2ix is equal to ml square by 6 then ix is equal to ml square by 12 so within 1 minute we can solve this the question is two rods are placed perpendicular to each other forming a design x okay and find the moment of inertia along the angular bisectors so answer you will get uh, ml square by 12 so one rod also you are getting ml square by 12 this also will get ml square by 12 and next we will see angular momentum <coughs> angular momentum and its conservation so we have written formula up to force up uh, before force only we will get uh, a word called momentum a physical quantity linear momentum is equal to m into v then uh, angular momentum l is equal to i omega in place of m you have to write i in place of v you have to write i omega and uh, angular momentum is a vector quantity r bar cross p bar l bar is equal to r bar cross p bar the angular momentum with respect to a axis suppose a particle is here it has some velocity in this direction this is p bar now take from the axis where you want to rotate you can take from zero or you can take from the axis if you want about its origin this is r bar then l bar is equal to r bar cross p bar this is angular momentum and conservation of linear momentum i will define conservation of linear momentum conservation of linear momentum is under the absence of external force under the absence of external force total momentum of system is conserved here also under the absence of external torque under the absence of external torque under the absence of external torque total momentum total angular momentum is conserved that is l initial is equal to l final l initial is equal to l final momentum before initial momentum is equal to final momentum without external torque that is i1 omega 1 is equal to i2 omega 2 
I1 omega 1 is equal to I2 omega 2. If you reduce moment of inertia, your angular frequency increases. That means, if you want to make more rotations, you have to bring your mass together. A ballet dancer, a ballet dancer will fold her arms so that moment of inertia decreases, then she can make more revolution. This is the condition of I1 omega 1. Suppose if a disc is rotating, if I place a small disc, let us assume a disc is rotating like this. On the disc, if I keep one more small disc gently, means without applying any torque, then <coughs> momentum is conserved. Initial momentum is equal to final momentum. That is I1 omega 1 is equal to I2 omega 2. This is then they will ask uh, the omega 1 you can write it as 2 pi n frequency or 2 pi by t. Omega 1 you can write it as 2 pi by t. Omega 1 you can write i 1 2 pi by t 1 is equal to i 2 2 pi by T2, where T is the time period. I1 by T1, I1 by T1 is equal to I2 by T2, I2 by T2. Sometimes they will ask what is the time period of earth if earth sinks to half of its radius. Similarly, I1 2 pi n1 is equal to I2 2 pi n2, 2 pi 2 pi will get cancelled, I1 n1 is equal to I2 n2 frequency and next is rotational kinetic energy, rotational kinetic energy, rotational kinetic energy. Kinetic energy, linear kinetic energy formula you know, linear kinetic energy is half m v square, half m v square. Similarly, it is also equal to p square by 2 m, p square by 2 m. So, rotational kinetic energy R k e, I write this as R k e, rotational kinetic energy is equal to half i omega square or it also written as L square by 2 i. So, you just learn how to change linear equations into rotational equation, then it will be very simple to write the formulas and just go through moment of inertia and how to apply moment of inertia in different cases. This is L square, <coughs> L square by 2 i. This L is nothing but angular momentum, linear momentum I will convert into angular momentum mass is measure of inertia that I will convert into moment of inertia. So, L square by 2 i is rotational kinetic energy. So, next topic will be rolling motion that we will see in the next video. Thank you for joining me. If you have any doubts or any queries, you can write in the comment section. So, that I will discuss in the next video and please subscribe my channel. Thank you.